Hello and welcome back to And That's a Fact, the channel where we take our subjective opinions and turn them into definitive, objective fact. I'm Neil Adamson. And I'm Rick Papandrea. And this week we are diving into our first round, the results of our first round of our comic book bracket that you guys have been voting on. And in this video, we will be covering the results for the independent sub-bracket. That's right. These are the, basically any comic book movie adaptation that's not DC or Marvel. Yep. Uh, all the other ones. Yep, and there are quite a few. Um, we went through our preview video and, and, and kind of outlined a lot of those. Um, there's a lot of them that didn't make the cut because... Yeah, this was uh, the largest uh, section. And so yep. the top 16 movies made it, but that still left like another 30 movies that didn't. So yep. this is probably going to be one of our harder brackets, I think, just by virtue of the size of the a pool, the pool. Rather. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I uh, I know I was a little sad that turtles didn't make it, so I gotta represent the turtles for for you know for that. I mean, look, but more power to you. I love the turtles as much as anyone born in the late '80s. Well, probably not as much as anyone born in the late '80s. But like as great as those movies are, objectively, you have to admit. They probably didn't belong on this well, list. Well, it is a very competitive list. There's a lot of yes, really good films on it. There's also a lot of films that I think are either A, underrated, or B, not as... They're not as popular because not enough people have seen them. I do think we have several movies, or, or you know, several at least, that, that aren't well known. And uh, despite their being... This, but despite those having critical success and being good movies, I think not being known is going to hurt a lot of the movies on this list. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, our number one seed is probably the maybe the most well known film in this whole bracket, and I think that that yeah. is part of the you know part of the reason that it's a number one seed. But again, these are based off Rotten Tomatoes critics' ratings, so. That right. doesn't necessarily mean much in terms of popularity. The popularity factor is going to be you guys. So your votes are what's really going to, you know, yeah. determine this. Like, make, make sure you vote. We've still got voting going on for our other three brackets, depending upon when exactly you're watching this. Um, and so follow the links below. Vote in all the brackets because you still have, you have a voice in this. Yep. Absolutely. So without it's just further a really ado, quiet voice. <laughs> we're going to jump right into our first match, and that is the number one seed Men in Black versus the number 16 seed Red. Yeah, um, I mean, I think that the winner here is going to be pretty obvious. Again, just to reiterate, I don't know who won. Uh, Neil has the results, so I'm going to sort of speculate, and then he'll be able to give us the answer. Uh I think this one is obvious, maybe the most obvious one on this list. Um, it's a 1 versus a 16. Men in Black, I think it's a pretty beloved movie by everyone. Uh, there's something in it for everyone. It's funny, it's weird, it's action-y. It's Will Smith at his most Will Smith-iest. Um, in the most and, and, Will Smith-y time of yeah, you know, exactly. recent history. Um, and Red, I liked Red. I thought it was good. Uh, but I don't think that it deserves to beat Men in Black. I think that Men in Black is definitely a, a, a better movie. Well, and Men in Black ends up taking this one uh, overwhelmingly. Uh, 94% um, oh, wow. goes to Men in Black, which, you know, at first glance, when I first saw this matchup, I was like, a 1 and a 16? Like, that doesn't necessarily seem, at first glance to me, like a 1 and a 16, because I thought Red was really good, and Men in Black has always been kind of... It's been a favorite from childhood and everything, but I didn't necessarily hold it in a high regard. And so, I to 100 percent agree. It's kind of I, I love it, but it is kind of a camp fest. Yeah, and uh -huh. so to me, I kind of looked at the merits of Red and Men in Black. Like I looked at it, I thought it was going to be really close, and yeah. uh, I thought, you know, okay, Men in Black might end up taking. The more and more I thought about what Men in Black has to offer, the more I kind of believe that it was going to go that way. But you can't yeah. really, you can't throw Red out for everything that it does. I mean... Right. I mean, I just, I, I think I've only seen Red once, but I have a very clear image of, like, John Malkovich being hidden in a pile of garbage and then springboarding into a standing position and pointing a crossbow at yeah. uh, 
And he what's is so it? brilliant like, in that film. Yeah, it's it is certainly an enjoyable movie, and now I want to go back and watch it again. You know, talk, um, talking about Will Smith being his most Will Smithiest, like this is John Malkovich being his most, his John, most Malkovich-y. John Malkovich. <laughs> yeah, it's really it's really true. <laughs> it's really perfect, and you know, this was kind of I feel like the better answer to like the Expendables franchise. Like it was the yes, the, the more 100%. mature, like. Mature in a sense, like, refined, like, answer yeah, to that. Yeah, where the Expendables so. are like, oh, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's more fun, and somehow, yeah, I don't know. You're right, yeah. though. I 100% agree. But, but, unfortunately, Red does not move on, so. Yeah. Uh, it is fun, though. They did make, I never saw the second one. You know, I have seen it, but it's much less memorable, but I sure. do, I do, I have seen it, and I do believe I own it, but I, uh, I don't remember it as much. Um, but yeah, so Men in Black, you know, the number one seed. Moves on. Moves on. Anything else to say about Red before we forget about it forever? <laughs> um, you know, I, like I said, I really enjoyed the film. It's sad to say goodbye to it, but it's understandable when it's going up against a number one seed, yeah. so. That's, that's Helen Mirren, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Can I petition to get more Helen Mirren Dude, in action amazing. movies? Yeah. Like, just, I mean, more Helen Mirren in everything. Yeah. That's but, true. like, I, I, I want to see, like, you know how they just redid Ocean's 8? Yeah. I want to see, like, Helen Mirren and Judy Dench and oh, Maggie yes. Smith together in, like, an Ocean's 8 kind of movie. That would, like, be, where that would be so great. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, oh, and Julie Andrews. There would not be a classier movie, it would be impossible. <laughs> See, and you put them in the in the the best situation. That's like, oh, this isn't necessarily a classy situation, but they bring the class, right? You know? Yeah, I mean, the, the four of them could be in like a a dirty middle of the desert strip club, and it would they would make it a classy situation somehow. They bring class wherever they go. It's very <laughs> true. All right, so we're gonna move on to our next match, and that is the number eight seed Dread versus the number nine seed Atomic Blonde. This one is tough for me to choose. Not only, I mean, because there's eight and nine seated, but because I haven't seen Dread. I've watched uh, some videos on Dread. I've seen, like, synopses and stuff. Um, and it seems like they're pretty evenly matched. I did see Atomic Blonde, and I got to say, I was kind of let down. Like, I loved a lot of what Atomic Blonde did, and especially their the fight sequences... They did long takes and wide shots with Charlize Theron in a lot of the cases in these really, really elaborate stunt pieces. And I thought they were awesome. But ultimately for me, the plot felt short or fell short, excuse me. And I think in some ways it was trying to be too clever for its own good. Like, oh, it was a triple cross on a double cross. And yeah, I left I, the movie going, who was the bad guy? Like, <laughs> I don't, Yeah, I don't want to get into spoilers or anything on it too much. But I do remember there were a couple moments during the film where I did feel like I, I had to stop my, like, take myself out of the film and try to, like, backtrack, like, more than I should in a, yes. in a standard thriller. I, and, and that was a little messy, the yes. I love the aesthetic of Atomic Blonde, and I love the fighting, and I loved the music, but ultimately, because of some of the plot issues, I have to give it to Dread, even though I haven't seen it, which feels really weird doing. Well, it's, it's interesting because despite having said that about Atomic Blonde, I really, I left the movie loving, like, one of the things that stuck with me was the soundtrack. I thought the soundtrack was amazing. Agreed, it's one 100%. Of the, one of the few movies like this, Baby Driver, and a couple others like that, right when I left the theater, I went and I bought the soundtrack on iTunes to listen to on yeah. the way home. Uh, but the, you know, the action, the set pieces, like all of these different things about it, I was, I had a blast when I watched it. This is something but, you'll find out about us. If Neil has a blast in a movie, if the set pieces are good, he loves it. And if I have a blast in a movie, but the plot kind of falls apart, and I'm like, ah, some of it didn't really work, though, I'm much more critical of it. And it's a classic argument yeah, that we have. I give things <laughs> a lot more of a pass in, in, in that if I have fun, I give it a pass. Uh, but yeah. I, I had a lot of fun with that movie, and I also had not have not seen Dread. 
Um, Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I knew it I wasn't anything Urban, like though, the too. original with you know with Sylvester Stallone. This is the the Urban one, but the cool people call him Sly. You know. <laughs> but um, I kind of assumed that um, Atomic Blonde was going to take this one, even though it's a nine seed versus eight. It's basically the same thing. Here, there. I assumed Atomic Blonde was going to take this one, and that I wouldn't need to see Dread because it was going to be knocked out in the first round. I was wrong. Uh, really? Dread ends up winning fifty six percent. It was one of our closest uh, wow, that closest close. matches. Um, so now I'm definitely going to have to see this movie going into the next round. Yeah, me round. too. So, so it was going to be then Dread going up against Men in Black. That'll be interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's, we've got one like the camp fest '90s fun, and the other just ultra violent. Uh, That'll be a good match. Well, I, I'm going to have to see what it was about Dread that we had this many people come out and support for that because yeah. I did not think that it was it wasn't it didn't do very well at the box office like no the, the they underperformed and it only cost I mean it wasn't a particularly ex- for action as action movies go it wasn't a particularly expensive one yeah so you know I was very surprised to see how much support it got um so the fact that it beat out Atomic Blonde a film that I thought you know despite some issues was the clear winner uh, now I definitely need to see what it is that pushed this one through. See if it has what it takes to go up against the juggernaut like Men in Black. Because yeah. I'm going to guess no, but obviously I haven't seen it yet, so I don't know. Yeah, so it's hard for us to speculate on this one, I guess, because neither of us have seen Dread. Uh, but I think that uh, it would be foolish for to say that Men in Black is going to lose because a lot of these movies are... Because this is the independent set, they're darker, they're more violent, more of these are rated R than in any of the other categories. Men in Black is rated PG. And so I think it would be foolish to count it out and say, well, this one's not as violent, so people aren't going to like it as much. Or it's PG, it's more family, count it out. But it would also be foolish to go the other way and say, oh, well, this one's more family friendly, so people are going to vote for it more. You know, that could hurt it or help it. And I honestly, I don't know which one it will be. But well, I think that we need to see Dread. <laughs> yeah, we definitely do. Men in Black is obviously more accessible, but um, yeah. we'll see if that, that's enough and what that film has, if that's enough to take it through to the next round. So we're going to yeah. move on to our next match, and that is the number five seed, Road to Perdition, going up against the number 12 seed, Kick Ass. This one is interesting because I haven't seen Road to Perdition either, and there's a couple I haven't seen on this list, and I'll, I'll tell you. Um, but I don't think it'll win anyway. I mean, I think that Road to Perdition is probably better, even though I haven't seen it. Like, Tom Hanks is in it. It's a very serious gangster movie. Like, just from what I know about it, I'm guessing it was probably made, like, with an eye towards making a good film, whatever that means. Kick-Ass, though, was made to be a huge amount of fun, and it absolutely was. And I think also... Road to Perdition came out long enough ago that a lot of people have forgotten it. Kick-Ass is... I mean, Kick-Ass came out a while ago, too, but they made a second one. It's still very much a part of, like, the culture. People know Kick-Ass. I think it goes to Kick-Ass easy because Kick-Ass... This is one where it's definitely a popularity contest, this matchup. And I think that Kick-Ass owns that popularity contest. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, going into this bracket, there were a couple films on this list that I specifically said... These are clearly better films, but not as many people have seen them or they're not as familiar with them. This was one of those situations. I do believe yeah. Road to Perdition, you know, just in, in a number of different ways is a definitely technically, I believe it's a better film. Um, sure. The cinematography is amazing in that movie. Um, it's the acting in it I think is so much more subtle and it's well I mean yeah it's Tom it's, Hanks yeah. versus like Christopher Mintz Plaza and nothing yeah. against him but he wasn't supposed to be acting subtle when he was yes. nicknamed or his name was a, well, like and this yeah. is this is what's so interesting about this particular matchup is because they both are based on comic books and yep. they both deal with subject matter concerning mob bosses and somebody oh, that's super true and somebody <laughs> taking on a mob boss, like a, a like someone who doesn't have the right or the like wherewithal to do so, taking yeah. on a mob boss, 
and they co- they do it in completely <laughs> different like ways. <laughs> Right? Yeah, that's really true. The elevator pitch for both of those movies is the same. Yeah, it's a guy really, takes really on the mob. A guy with no business taking on the mob does it. <laughs> yeah, that they end up going against each other, and really, what it comes down to is maybe one film is better than the other, but which one got more butts and seats and made people remember it more? And that goes to Kickass. Kickass wins sixty nine percent. So this. Clearly, as you said, was a popularity contest, but it's a popularity contest with a point. And that point right. is that this type of film is so exemplary of what a comic book film has come to, you know, we've come to know as a comic book film. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think there's nothing wrong with a popularity contest, particularly in the movie industry. I mean, yes. Some people aren't trying to make films to make like really, I don't know, important content or say something. But for the most part, this is a business. And, and it's a popularity contest in the most clear sense because which made the most money. That's what people saw. Yeah. That's what people are going to remember. That's what they liked more. This is, it's such a complete democracy where people vote with their money and whatever gets the most money, people like the most. Like it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, Kick-Ass, anything, I mean, I haven't seen Road to Perdition, but do you have anything else to add about Road to Perdition? Um, I think it's a shame that this number five seed gets knocked out in the first round. I really do think it is a shame because that is an amazing film, and if you haven't seen it, you really should. I don't want to, like, go on a whole spiel about that film, but um, I think that this just goes to show you, you know, like like I said, Kick-Ass took that same, you know, storyline. Obviously, yeah. it's not the same exact story. But sure. they took a similar the premise yeah. in, in our current modern-day world. And they injected it with, like, this, um, this uh, like, adolescent um, dream, right? Which yeah. was, you know, I want to be a superhero in real life. I want to actually take on these people yeah. and succeed. And, and they make it so real. Like I say realistic, like in the sense that like they don't pull any punches when it comes to the consequences of you doing something that ridiculous. Yeah. And that's yeah, and what I think is so great. great. And, but also like it starts out and oh my gosh, I'm totally spacing on the actor who plays uh, big daddy. What is his name? Nick Nicholas Cage. Cage. Um, he so start, he's clearly so like good. a Batman caricature, yeah. and he's even doing an Adam West impression. But from the from the beginning, we see him, and he's parody. And by the end of the movie, like he's a tragic he's not character. parody. Yeah. Yes, it's yeah. amazing. And like, I don't think any actor could do that other than and, Nicholas and Cage because he is a parody of about, himself. That's the other thing about this film in terms of what it represents for this genre of film. Yeah. Because. That's how a lot of people see comic books. Is when you fir- at first glance, a comic book looks like a caricature of something else, like something yes. fantastical. But the more you dive into that character, the more you realize that those characters are tragic figures that have really deep, you know, histories and backgrounds and and the, the things that they go through can be really profound for the reader. And I think that the job that they did in transferring that part of comic book reading to the yeah. screen for comic book viewing comic book movie viewing you know that was you know can't be understated but yeah we're going to talk a lot about kickass probably next yeah, week sure it'll do the next pretty round, well so. although it it's going to have uh, this next match is going to be interesting i think so yeah so it's going to go up against the winner of our next match and that is the number sorry I, it's Four. Number four seed, uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the World, going up against the number 13 seed, Kingsman. This is the first Kingsman. Yeah, this one is, is really interesting, because uh, again, it's a pretty, there's a, a pretty serious disparity between the seeds, although you might be able to guess which one I think uh, is, I don't know, have a hard time saying better, but certainly that I like more. Um, I think that Kingsman takes this one, especially because, again, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World did not get, did not make as much money. People didn't see it. A lot, not many people know about it. I think the people that know about Scott Pilgrim really, really love it. Or, at least like me, like it for what it is 
and respect it as a movie. Um, but everybody knows Kingsman. Everybody saw Kingsman. It well, and Kingsman I mean, is newer. So yes, that's and Kingsman part is the, significantly yeah. newer. Um, and the sequel is only came out not even a year ago. Yeah, was it last, last year? summer? I think. Yeah, the end of last summer. So Kingsman is definitely more in our minds. Um, and I think Scott Pilgrim kind of takes, I don't know, it, it's very hopeful. Kingsman is more, it's a, it's a parody of the spy genre. If you like Archer, you'll like Kingsman, you know. Um, I think that Kingsman is, is certainly more uh, well, loved well, by, or loved by more people. Well, Scott Pilgrim is, I, I, I don't want to say this in a mean way, um, cause I don't mean it that way, but Kingsman is much more mindless action, popcorn flick for the masses. And right. Scott Pilgrim is, is much more of a heartfelt hero's journey. Yes. And, and oh, this, it's innocent. Yes. Scott it's, Pilgrim it's, has it, innocence it about has it. Innocence, that King- and, and because of all of that, it has this cult following of people who maybe who like the comic to begin with. But also right. people just in general who identify with that character played right. by Michael Sarah, And I think for that reason, these two films were tied going into today. And right, oh, really? right before um, the voting closed, um, we got a big push from Scott Pilgrim. And Scott Pilgrim ended up taking this one 59%. Really? Yeah, so... Wow, that really um, surprises me, I mean, actually. it is a I guess four I'll just seed. Take this <laughs> <laughs> just get undressed right now, Rick. Yeah. No, that's a terrible idea. We don't... We, no one wants that. <laughs> um, but, you know, the seeding in this case, to me, makes sense. I did yeah. think that popularity-wise, you know, going back to what we were just saying with Kick-Ass and Road to Perdition, I thought yeah. the popularity factor was going to be a little bit more. But I do think yeah. if you're going to compare one of these two films to Kick-Ass, it's not really Kingsman, it's more Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, although Kingsman and Kick-Ass, I think, do have a lot in common. They, they both do. are really violent. Um, I'm really surprised Kingsman is, is stepping out so early. But K- K- Scott Pilgrim and Kick-Ass will be interesting too because, I mean... One of those is really a sort of um, sinister, sinister, cynical parody, and yeah. one of them is a very innocent, um, hopeful, hopeful, yeah, kind of parody. But yeah, very interesting. That'll be that'll be a really. Uh, they I'll both have to rewatch Scott they, Pilgrim because I think I've only seen it once or twice. Yeah, they both deal with protagonists that are relatively similar in terms of yeah. and and like that was one of the things that both of those films did so well is that they spoke to like that like that protagonist like a lot of viewers were able to identify with. Yes. And so both of those films have these protagonists that uh, I think a lot of our audience is going to be identifying with and rooting for. And so I think it is going to be a little bit more difficult yeah. to choose. Right. It's way know, easier for in. me to, to see myself in Scott Pilgrim, the nerd who likes video games, than it is in, you know, someone like Judge Dredd. <laughs> <laughs> as much but, as I wish that weren't the case sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, so unfortunately, Kingsman is getting knocked out Man. in the first round as much That's, as Rick dressed up for it. I really I love honestly, that film. And that would ruin that ruins my like I thought Kingsman was gonna go into like the Sweet Sixteen. Like I'm really surprised by that. Yeah, yeah. It definitely um it was a close one. It was always going to be a close one and this yeah. is gonna really shake things up as to where they go from here. You know, we had yeah. you know the four seed or the five seed road to perdition getting knocked out. Now we um I thought the four seed was going to get knocked out with Scott Pilgrim, yeah. but now the four seed pushes ahead. So now we've got a, a little bit different of a dynamic looking yeah, forward. Yeah, this versus Scott this Pilgrim. Room. That's going to be, I have no idea. Like, I have no prediction there. Well, we'll have to see what you guys choose. Yeah, uh, we're going to jump this is why down. Need to vote. Yep, we're going to jump down into the second half of this bracket now. All right, and let's do it. look at our next match is the number six seed Hellboy against the number 11 seed The Mask. All right, this one's tough for me because I'm pretty sure I've seen both of these movies, but the fact that I don't know indicates that it's been a long time and I've probably only seen them once. Uh, so if I have to choose one, though, I'm going to say Hellboy. I mean, obviously it's Del Toro. He's a great director. Um, and I think 
if we're talking about people at their most personist, you know, Will Smith and, and John Malkovich, I think The Mask is Jim Carrey probably at his most Jim Carreyist. And I don't like that version of Jim Carrey. I love Jim Carrey, the dramatic actor, like in The Majestic and in The Truman Show. And I don't like Jim Carrey so much as the, oh, we're just do crazy stuff and we're going to make a movie of you See, doing crazy but, stuff. But that was how he started off. That was his like right. calling card in, his, in, the, in the early part of his career. Now he's doing other kinds of crazy stuff and it's brilliant <laughs> and I love him. I love him so much. But sure. this was, as a kid... This was one of my favorite films. You know, this, you had really? Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. I mean, sure. the Jim Carrey movies of the 90s, in, including The Mask, like, they were some of the most iconic to me. They, they yeah, my were mom, most exciting. Yeah, my mom, like, didn't like that kind of stuff, and so I wasn't exposed to it. And then when I finally did see it, I was like, I was kind of past the age where you love it, you know? like. Well, you know what I think is really interesting, talk, in looking at Hellboy and The Mask? is that Hellboy is a, a very fine film. I think that the second Hellboy was a much which we'll better... Um, yeah, which is in this bracket as well, and we can talk about later. But I think the second one was a, a much better um, turn at you know doing Hellboy and his character and everything like that. Sure. Not that the first one was bad, but, um, but then I think about a film like The Mask, I rewatched this like two weeks ago, just mm -hmm. randomly, and sure, it was kind of ridiculous because I was thinking to myself, do people like not have people missed the parallel here between Deadpool and the mask character? And I started going online mm -hmm. and and looking it up, and no, people have not missed the parallel because there's a lot of articles and videos out there talking about it. But seriously, if you like Deadpool and you have not seen The Mask, you need to see The Mask because it fair, is fair. the 90s version of doing Deadpool. Like in terms of like breaking the fourth wall and in terms of um, you know, flipping the genre on its head type of thing and 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 right. you know, um what's it called? Being all meta, right? Like Right. The mask is that 100%. It did it before Deadpool. It's the hipster version of Deadpool. Um, <laughs> and, oh, don't tell it like that. And, uh, like, it really... It's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous film, but it is a lot of fun. And this was sure. this was Cameron Diaz's first film. Was um, it really? Yeah, this was her first film. Um, like, it's just overall... It's just such a fun time. And I think that people thought about this when they went into voting... Sure. And it was enough. Uh, the Mask really? ends up winning 65% over Hellboy. So The Mask will be moving on, which I am excited wow. for. And I do think even though Hellboy was seeded as a number six seed, I do think that its second one was the better one. And if one were to move on, I would rather it be the second one. Sure. Which is the next match. Yes. So going on into our next match, we got Hellboy 2, The Golden Army, up against V for Vendetta. Hellboy 2 was a number three seed, so slightly higher than its number six seed, or, um, mm -hmm. not prequel, but, um, and then uh, the V for Vendetta was a number 14 seed. So this one is tough. I know I've seen The Golden Army, but it was only once, and I remember very little. I watched V for Vendetta, Basically every year, if not every year, every other year, every, you know, November the 5th, because uh, I'm cool. Because he um, remembers, remembers the 5th of November. Right, exactly. Otherwise, I'd forget about the, you know. The gunpowder treason uh, and plot. Right, yeah. exactly. I know and of I, no reason why the gunpowder treason should ever be forgotten. No, and the only reason would be that we don't watch the movie enough. And I mean, also, <laughs> it's uh, Alan Moore, and he's a great uh, writer. And, yeah, um, which he hated this film. Like, he right. hates all of his adaptations. <laughs> like, that's Alan Moore. That's what he does. Like Right, yeah. Which, <laughs> like... <laughs> because... But you have to, like... You look at, like, a film like Watchmen, which we'll get to eventually when we get to the DC bracket, but, like... I'd love there's... to be rich enough that I can hate stuff that gives me money. <laughs> but you understand why he feels this way about... Like, when you look at V for sure. Vendetta, there's a lot in there that 
it is very much intended for it to be strictly for the medium of a graphic novel. Watchmen right. even more so. So oh when you gosh. take those and you try to adapt them into a film, like it's very understandable why the creator would be like, this, no, 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 no. You know what I mean? Um, but V for Vendetta, as much as it does that, and it, it takes a lot of liberties from the actual graphic novel. It's yeah. very, very different. But the we're not judging them there. based on their adaptations. No. We're judging them based on the quality of the movie. Yeah. And based on that, it's hard to to see this as a 14 seed to me. me I too. think it me should too. be much higher. And like I'm not usually a big um, <coughs> anti-hero guy. Normally I like my heroes to be heroes and I like my villains to be villains. That's why, and we'll get to this when we talk about Deadpool, but that's why as much as I like Deadpool, it's never... He's never going to be my favorite character, and it's never going to be my favorite movie. Um, but there's just something about overthrowing a corrupt government. And, like, the ideals that V for Vendetta stands for are very much similar to the ideals that, like, America stood for when we wrote the Declaration of Independence, although he does it a little bit more violently. Uh, and that, to me, kind of removes him from the antihero genre into more of a revolutionary, which there is a fine line, don't get me wrong, but um, it's, it's really hard for me to think of this as a 14 seed. So if I'm choosing for myself, I say V for Vendetta. If you want me to guess what everybody voted, I, I, I'm going to guess V for Vendetta just because I think it's probably more well known and people like to watch it every November. And, um, but I'm, I, that, it wouldn't, either way wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, um, I think when you look at these two films, like I said before, I feel like this is, it kind of is a shame that Hellboy 2, you know, being a three seed, going up against a 14 seed, usually that's going to go to the three seed, like all the right. time. Yeah. Um, in in this case, you have this Hellboy film, this Guillermo del Toro film, where, you know, you have a wonderful portrayal of Hellboy by Ron Perlman. And, yep. like, Doug Jones as Abe Sapien, like, is just, it's, it's Guillermo del Toro doing monster movies in the best way because character is at the forefront of everything. Even right. though these characters are fantastical characters, like, you, you care about them. And that's right. what yeah. del Toro does so well. And... And I mean, so, still does. He just won an Oscar for it. Like, exactly. And the, and I believe wasn't Doug Jones the guy in Shape of Water? I assume. I mean, it was um, a it was a long skin creepy or a, like a long skinny guy in prosthetic makeup, and it was directed by Guillermo del Toro. Yeah, I don't yeah, know who it was. Else yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Abe Sap the guy, same guy who plays Abe Sapien. Um, in yeah. this, in Hellboy 2. Honestly, when I saw those trailers, I was like, okay, so it's Abe Sapien. Like, <laughs> it was just... <laughs> well, and, and like, this is, that's the thing is, this film, it's sad for me to see it up against the film like V for Vendetta, because even though V for Vendetta is a 14 seed, like, you already know it's where a public lot opinion is going to sway yeah. on this. And it does, tragically, in my mind... Uh, v for Vendetta takes it uh, 88%. Holy cow, I did yeah. not think of that. Dis I, dis and, I, and again, I think it's it's a matter... This is like the Road to Perdition versus yeah. Kick-Ass type of situation. Not that Hellboy 2 is Road to Perdition, but you know, you're know, sure. you looking at a much higher seed that has a much is a much deeper film going up against the film that thematically is incredibly deep and has so much to unpack. Um, but... Yeah. The performances are a little two-dimensional in V for Vendetta, to be honest. Think so? I think so. I, I think. I mean, Hugo Weaving well, and um, I, Nat Natalie Portman. Hugo. Yeah. I'll, okay, I'll say Natalie Portman's performance okay. is a little two-dimensional. She is an amazing actress, but there there are times that I feel like in this in that movie there are times where she is like one hundred percent in the, in that role. And then there's in, other the, times in the rain scene. Yes, yes, in the rain scene, you know, when she's getting her head shaved. There are, and then there are other times where I just feel like she's phoning it in, 
And sure, I, well, I'm not gonna argue with that. But Hugo Weaving, dude, Hugo he Weaving, is awesome. what he was able to do with that mask on, like yeah, to portray he, that character, is he brilliant. He can't emote. Yeah. He can't. You the whole movie, his face. Well, it's does a master. Not move. It's a master class in, in mask acting. Is really yeah, shoulder what it acting. Is. Everything he had to do was here. Yeah, this is it. So, <laughs> but we'll we'll dive into more about V for Vendetta later. Yeah. For now, I just want to say I'm sad to see Hellboy Two: The Golden Army get left. So at neither the Hellboy. Uh, made it through. It'll be the mask versus V for Vendetta. That'll yeah. be really interesting too because two masks. I mean, the mask. It, they're <laughs> they're super opposite movies, and they both wear masks. Yeah, <laughs> they do. Um, which I'm sure we'll have a lot to say, but I don't want to spend too much more time yeah. on that. I want to jump into our last two matches of of the bracket, and the first one is the number seven seed The Crow against the number ten seed Sin City. This is hard for me, too. I actually, I, so I haven't seen The Crow, and I'm just going to get ahead. I also haven't seen History of Violence for the next one. Um, they're similarly seated. Uh, I really, I don't know anything about The Crow. I do like Sin City. The thing that I think has, it, it has going against it is that unlike so many other comic book movies, particularly superhero comic book movies, it doesn't have, like, a good ending. There's no, like, heroic rescue or like it's it's just a lot of sort of really twisted vignettes i mean it takes a lot for me to watch a movie and you know it takes a lot for a movie to take who i previously thought of as frodo and take all of the goodwill that frodo has and lose it and then make me creeped out by the same actor like it's it's just a it's a really interesting and good movie i think but i think people might vote against it because of how it makes them feel, and how it makes them feel is uncomfortable. Well, and I think uh, on the flip side of that, I, I do think The Crow was never... I remember seeing it when I was younger, but I don't know if I ever actually followed along. Because I think I right. saw it like right when it came out, which like I was way too young like to be... In, right. I think I was too young to be watching that film. Um, sure. And I don't think I followed it, and I never really went back to it because I think I was too young for it, and it, it kind of left a bad like taste in my mouth. Yeah. Uh, but I do actually think that, you know, despite that, The Crow is a film that a lot of people, um, it speaks to them in uh, an optimistic way, um, despite all of the things that, you know, you know, they've been trying, I feel like, it's another one of those cult classics that people have been rallying around to get more made. Um, yes. And it's kind of had that curse, you know, with, with Brandon Lee's death. And every time they try to make a new one, like, it just falls through. And I guess now they're finally making another one. It yeah, was I think just I heard announced. That. But um, I think Sin City was. It, when Sin City came out, it so dramatically opened up the book for yeah. comic book movies and what you could do with comic book movies right. and the and style certainly, that it, it had. And so yeah. I think... It's like these are these can be made for adults, these can be stylized, these can be artistic. Yeah, so um, when you look at like this cult classic versus this, you know... Kind of also a cult classic. It's a cult classic, but in terms of what it did for the genre, it's much more important. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think that I, um, I think that I would it, agree with that. It made a bigger uh, statement. Like it, re it, it, it actually the ripple effect was greater with Sin City than I think it was for The Crow. Not that you can't make an argument that The Crow didn't influence sure. this this genre, but I think that's that's really what put it over the edge. Sin City ends up taking this one, even seventy five percent. So it was a pretty significant art, a margin that Sin City won by. Not a big surprise to me. Yeah, uh, I me know either, some but, people yeah. are going to be sad to see The Crow um, stuck in this I did, first round, I did want but... an excuse to watch it, but I guess I could, I could just watch it. Like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an adult. I, I, I don't really need an excuse to watch a movie. <laughs> so Sin City will be moving on. Um, that's I think that's a good choice, particularly given like the other stuff that's moving on. I, I think that that will and, probably yeah. do pretty well on I the think bracket it, overall. I think it makes sense, and it will be going up against the winner of uh, number two seed, History of Violence, versus number fifteen seed, Wanted. All right, like this one is kind of easy for me, even though I haven't seen History of Violence, and even though it's the two seed, like it's Wanted. And here's the reason: when I was in college. I, this movie came out and I was like, that looks so dumb. And a friend of mine, whose name was Neil, 
was like, no, it's awesome. We're going to watch it right now. I'm pretty sure that none of this is wrong yet. Correct me. Uh, and he put it on and, and we watched it immediately, despite the fact that it was like 11 at night and we both had class in the morning. And then we watched it like a lot after that. And, you know, I remember one time very specifically, a bunch of people were over at Neil's place and someone just like was like, oh yeah, we're going to watch Wanted. And we we're all like, all right, sure. And we put it on and we just stood for the whole movie. And some like 20 or 30 minutes in, they're like, Rick, you know, you guys have just been like standing. Do you want to sit down? Because there's plenty of couch available. And we're both like, we oh yeah, we are. couches in my apartment. It yeah, was there was like plenty of sitting space. Couches. <laughs> and one of those couches, I lived there after he did. One of those couches we couldn't get out. We had to rip it apart. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what? There was plenty of sitting space. We're like, oh yeah, we are still standing. And just looked back at the TV, and literally, I think we stood for the whole movie, just like flanking the TV like lunatics. Dude, I love that movie when it came out. I thought it was so Dude, much fun. It was. It is. It's. There's so hundred percent. But this, and you know who's in that movie? Chris Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is in a ridiculous role, in a role yes. that I hate him for. But anyway, yes. Um, yeah, that film. It was back in a time when action movies, I felt like, were doing, like, they were all very similar to Wanted, and every time one would come out that was similar, like, we'd just get so excited, because it was like, (laughs) this is what we want to see in an action movie. Right. Yeah, and it was lunacy, and the best and most fun kind of lunacy. Yeah, curving bullets? Sure. Why not? I'll watch that. Yeah. Bombs on rats? Absolutely. (laughs) It's just so ridiculous and so much fun. And um, going up against the film, like a history of violence, that's a two seed that is arguably one of the best films in this entire bracket. Uh, Which I've never seen. I need to see it. but It really does come down to accessibility and if you've seen these two films. And yeah, yeah. Based on what we just said about Wanted, I think a lot more people have seen Wanted Wanted ends yeah. up winning 75%. That makes perfect sense to me. Maybe uh, if I saw both movies and was being totally objective, I might say, you know what, History of Violence is better. But I haven't seen both movies. I have seen Wanted, and when I think about it, I go back to college and the awesome and fun times that I had in college. And so I, uh, I think Wanted wins. I think that makes sense. Yeah, obviously this was a situation where... Um, you know, like we just said, like a history of violence, despite it being a two seed, it suffered from um, a lack of popularity. Yeah. Uh, not enough people had seen it. And Wanted was this film that, uh, you know, like we just said, it was it was a huge hit. Despite the most ludicrous it having some the most ridiculous things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is, you know. What ends up happening, ultimately, um, when you guys are voting, you're the ones determining, you know, who's moving on, and if critics say something is better, that doesn't matter. Right. What matters if, is if you had a better time, think that movie deserves to move on. Yeah. You know, and, and Any, this is, Whatever factors you, are, that are important to you, vote with those factors. Yeah, and, and, you know, in the previous match, we talked about The Crow, and I know a lot of people voted for The Crow because it, it's a much more special film to them than Sin City, and The Crow didn't make it on to this next round. Right. So now you've got Sin City going up against Wanted. That would be really is, interesting. It's and Yeah, and you're going to have people who, who voted for The Crow who now get to maybe be a little bit more free in their opinion because they're not tied to the movie that, like... Right they're cheering for so they can just straight up tell you know tell it how it is what do they think you know is wanted a better film than sin city right i don't think so Um, i don't i I don't think so either but i think it's a more fun film i definitely think that and so i don't know how i'm gonna vote to be honest but all of you should vote too so my vote it's like nothing it's a drop in the bucket yeah so you know this bracket we said at the at the beginning this was going to be our most competitive bracket because there were so many higher scoring critical films in these top 16 um 
And uh, really, when it comes down, when it came down to the seating, seating didn't mean much. Yeah. Um, Especially, what mattered, yeah. what mattered more was uh, visibility and yeah. uh, accessibility, and whether or not you are familiar with the film. And that's a big thing with comic book movies. Yeah, and especially with this genre. in the comic book bracket, I think. Um, you know, going forward, I think people are going to know all the movies a lot more, or at least know the characters. Yeah. Uh, so I think not knowing of not not having heard of something is really going to was most prevalent in this bracket, and probably will continue to be a little bit moving forward. Um, yeah. And and me saying that like certain films moved on based on popular that's not me saying you know that's not a dig at like oh better films were left at the wayside like I'm I'm not right. trying to say that the films that moved on weren't necessarily like worthy of moving on um, but what I do think that we get now is is every round that we go through this you're going to be faced and this is the great thing about these brackets is you're going to be faced with like a face-off of two, a lot of times, very different films. Yeah, and especially it's gonna, in, this, in this quadrant. Yeah, and it's going to be a matter of, okay, maybe you like something from, you know, about this, and you like something completely different about this. Right. I mean, like, imagine How if it's you Sin City that? versus Scott Pilgrim uh, at the end of the bracket. Like, those are two wildly different movies. And so I think this is going to be one of the most interesting brackets to watch. Definitely. Because unlike... You know, the other three brackets where they're all pretty cultivated characters. And especially unlike the MCU bracket, where it is an incredibly specifically cultivated universe, all of these movies are wildly different. And if there's one and thing... most that, of them are standalones, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Especially even if the they're ones not, that moved on. Yeah, and even if they're not, like, the other ones don't matter. Like, yeah, Men in Black and Red have sequels, but they don't need them. Like, well, and the, <laughs> and the one franchise that has... That had two sequels making it into this bracket. Nice. Neither of them move on. Yeah. So, so looking forward at our next uh, round for the independent bracket, we will have Men in Black against Dread, Kick Ass against Scott Pilgrim versus the World, The uh, Mask, Hellboy, or not The Mask. I ignore me. The Mask against V for Vendetta, and Sin City against Wanted. All really interesting and great matchups, I think. And honestly, I have a really hard time choosing all of them. So I'm really in excited to see how you guys vote. And so we can, uh, we can talk about it. Yeah, and each one of these really... You, you talked about them being diverse, but each one of these that actually moved on is a very specific... Like, it's, it's a very, like... I don't know how to describe it, but it's, it's kind of like taking the best of all of these different styles yes. of doing a comic book movie. Like, you have in Wanted, like, what you could say, like, Red was in that same kind of category. Right. Atomic Blonde's in that same kind of category. Like, so you have that moving forward for that group. You've got, which like, is one like, crazy spy thriller. Yeah, like, <laughs> action. Yeah, like, you've got something from that group. Then you've got, like the really graphic graphic novel group and, and that's represented really by Sin City. Yep. Although I would say maybe Dread is also in there as yeah, well. Yeah, Dread is, um, yeah. Then you've got a much more sillier like fantastic take and that's really represented by The Mask. Right. Then you've got something that's much more gritty realistic like but not in the ter not in the way that Sin City necessarily is in in a much more mature like in, in terms of like you know, refined way with V for Vendetta. Right, you yeah. Know? So you've got it's, all of these different parts of like, okay, comic books. Right. They're so I vast. Think, they're so different. These aren't DC or Marvel. There's so many different things out there. And these are the best. Yeah, like, I think that it. anyone could find a movie out of the ones that moved on that they liked. Out of yeah. these eight, I think that anyone could say, okay, you know, I like that movie. Which might not be true with the, like the other ones, the MCU or something. You might say, no, I don't like any of those movies. I don't like that style or something. But out of all of these, I, I think that everyone could find a movie they like out of this you know, really diverse cross-section, all of which fall under the comic book movie uh, heading. Yeah, just like and one other thing, like Men in Black is kind of like the space fantasy, and, yeah. and Kick-Ass is the superhero. Like, so it's, you really do have yeah. like everything here. and. 
that's so wonderful to see in this bracket. That's what this bracket was all about, and it's so great to see this this diverse group moving on into our next round. It's going to be really interesting to see how they fare up against these other brackets that are very heavily superhero film, right? You know, based. Uh, yeah, because so, really the only one in here that's a superhero movie is Kickass. The Kick rest, and that's not, not even superhero a superhero. Movies. And that's not right. Even and a he doesn't superhero. have powers. It's a vigilante. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, yeah, lots of fun. I'm excited to I'm see really excited. what's going on. You know, and uh, we're going to be jumping into the uh, DC bracket next, and then the, the non MCU, and then the regular MCU brackets as well from so Marvel. Go and vote. Yes. Vote we, and subscribe and follow us on Twitter and hit the notification bell because if you guys don't do that, then you're not going to see it or you're not going to vote. And it's way less fun for us. And the more people that get involved and the more people that comment, the more fun it is for all of us. And remember, we're not revealing these in our polls. So the only way yep. for you to find out who wins from who you voted on is by watching. So you got to stay and in, get involved. You got to you got to vote and you got to, you know, keep in, in you know, tune in and, and see what's going on. Yeah, because every week we're going to be whittling down to see which is the ultimate and best comic book movie and that is a fact